Our text for this morning is Psalm 19, verses 1 through 4, first part of verse 4. As we begin our Bible 101 class this morning, I want to tell you the story about Pramana. Pramana was uh, a Muslim man who wanted to know God and did his best to do that. He had memorized the Quran in Arabic which was interesting because he didn't understand Arabic or speak it. So he memorized all the words and he would chant uh, different passages every day or kind of sing them, hoping that it would please God and be kind of magic as he said the words. And But his life was not uh, going well or going the way he wanted. His uh, crops were failing, his livestock uh, was dying, his children were pretty disobedient and pretty awful. And in fact, his marriage was a shambles to the point that he and his wife were thinking, contemplating, getting divorced. And so he went to his uh, local imam at the mosque and he said, it's not working. I don't know God. I don't know what's happening in my life. And so the imam asked him to uh, bring him a chicken, bring him a white chicken. So he brought him a white chicken and they sacrificed it and burnt it there. And The imam said, now you go home and you fast and pray for three days. And on the third night of your fasting and prayer, you will, it will be revealed to you what you need to do and then do that and all will be well. So uh, Pramana did that and went home and fasted and uh, prayed and for three days, nothing. And then on that third night, Uh, As he lay there in bed, uh, getting ready to go to sleep, he heard a voice. God loves those who seek him. It's always his desire to reveal himself. It's always his desire to be made known. And what we're going to be looking at this morning in, in our Bible 101 class is how God reveals himself through his creation. Last week we were talking, if you remember, about how uh, maybe I think it was last week. Well, recently, uh, we talked about how God reveals himself through his word and through his son, Jesus Christ. And we can't separate Jesus from the word and we can't separate the word from Jesus and we can't separate the word and Jesus from God. If you want to know God, read the word. If you want to know God, get to know Jesus and to know uh, them is to know the father. And that's called... In, in theology terms or pastors or theologians, we call that specific revelation. You specifically get to know who God is and what he wants through the person of Jesus Christ and, and through his word. This morning, we're going to talk about something that theologians call general revelation. It's, a, it's a, uh, not a specific way that God reveals himself. So if you've turned to uh, Psalm chapter 19, I would like you to read verses 1 through 3 with me this morning, and I will fill in verse 4 because I didn't have that put on the screen. Let's read together what God's desire is and what his purpose is through his creation. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, whose voice is not heard. Verse 4, their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. Heavenly Father, you tell us in your word this morning that as you reveal themselves, there are things that you are declaring and proclaiming. Father, will you give us ears to hear, hearts that are open, and, and minds that can receive what it is you want to declare and proclaim to us this morning so that we might be drawn closer to you, so that we might know you as you want to be known. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So King David, the heavens declare the glory of God. The the heavens here is is not heaven in the, the sense of where God dwells or where Christians are who have gone home to be with him. Heavens here is is talking in an earthly sense of of the atmosphere, of the universe, of the stars. And it says that one of the purposes of the heavens is to declare the glory of God. 
This word declare is an interesting word. Here's the dictionary definition of declare. To acknowledge possession of something, usually in an emphatic manner. So when you declare something, you're saying, I have this, I really have it, okay? Um, the psalmist said, David said that the heavens, creation declares that God possesses what? Glory. Now we have to define that word glory for a minute because of our, our bad hymns and, and bad theology that we've, we've had over there. Too often people, uh, Christians define the word glory as heaven. Uh, heaven is not glory. Heaven is glorious and heaven is full of the glory of God, but heaven is not glory. Some of you may remember, uh, some of you that are older, remember the song? Maybe people still sing it. But uh, remember the song we sing when we were younger, I've Got a Home in Glory Land? Remember that? It's a great song. It's just really bad theology because nowhere in the Bible is heaven called glory. Uh, the word glory in the Bible, this is the easiest way to remember it. It means the true nature and true character of God. I can show you that in the life of Moses. Do you remember Moses when he was getting the Ten Commandments from God? He asked God a very specific question. What did Moses ask? Can you show me your glory? Did he say, can you show me heaven? No, he said, can you show me who you really are? I want to see you unveiled. I want to see, and you remember God's response to him, boy, as a sinful man, if I show you that, you're going to die. So that wouldn't be a good plan. I'll give you a little peek at my back as I pass by. And uh, ugh, I think it's Corinthians, but don't quote me on that. Uh, I believe it's in Corinthians anyway, where it says that we as Christians are being transformed from one degree of glory to another degree of glory. Not one degree of heaven to another, but one degree of the character and nature of God or of Christ. So the passage here says that the heavens declare the true character of God. Well, what do they declare? What, what part of God's nature do they, do, do they declare? Well, Romans 1 helps us with that. It, it tells us exactly what uh, creation is declaring about God. Romans chapter 1, beginning at verse 18, says this. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against un all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. What truth? For what can be known about God is evident to them because God has made it plain to them Namely, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world. And so uh, what God or what the heavens are declaring about God is, we would say the one that's implied is that God exists. Okay, that there is a God, that none of this got here by accident. Secondly, it's not only declaring that God exists, but that he is powerful, that he is transcendent, that he is above and beyond us, and that he has these attributes. That's a very general revelation of God. It's not revealing his mercy. It's not revealing his justice. It's revealing that he exists, that he's powerful, that he's eternal. He's above and beyond us. And so David says in the Psalms, one thing that we should realize that everyone should realize is that there is a God who exists and is powerful and has created this universe. In fact, Psalms 1 says there's no excuse for not knowing that because how can you not notice creation? Even if you're blind, you can hear creation. If you're hearing impaired, you can see creation. For those of us who have all our senses, we experience creation, we experience the universe all the time. And God says that his goal in that is that we should recognize the glory of God. And then it says that the sky above proclaims his handiwork. So there is a declaration that happens, which is a statement of something you possess, and a proclamation. I looked up the word proclaim, and it means to announce publicly, typically, insistently, in an official speech. And so David says that the universe or creation is declaring and proclaiming something about God. It's declaring his glory, his true nature, and it's proclaiming that he is active and living and he is working. 
Uh, this word declare is a word that uh, Hope and I heard quite a bit a couple of weeks ago. We went up to uh, the airport to get a, um, a pass so that when we travel to Africa, we don't have to wait in line so much, and it's easier to get back in the country and, and get some trusted traveler numbers. And, and uh, when we were all done, we had a very nice man, and he kept, he kept saying the word declare to us. He said, now when you come back, he said, make sure you declare anything that you have in your possession that you're not supposed to have. It's basically organic stuff. I can't, I can't bring back some seeds for you, Byron. I'm sorry. That's going to create a big problem. I can't bring back fruit or meats or things like that. Or if I spend really big dollars, they want to know that you've spent really big dollars. And the man said, now just to be really clear, he goes, if you declare something that you have that you're not supposed to have, you bring back a bag of oranges, he said, you declare it, we're going to take it away from you. You don't get to keep it, but you're not going to be in trouble. He said, however, if you don't declare what's in your possession and you get caught with it, he said, you lose this card. <laughs> he said, it goes into my desk and all the blessings and all the privileges of that go away. And he said it so many times, it was, I was trying not to, you don't want to smile when they're like doing a background on you and it's all serious, but he kept saying how important it was to declare it. He said, even if you, he said, even if you make it past the, uh, the border guys and you're getting to cuss and you remember, oh, that's right, they gave me an orange on the plane. He goes, declare that orange before you leave so you don't lose your card. I'm like, got it. Declare what we have. It's a pretty important thing. And, and the Bible says that the heavens are declaring the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. I thought about this morning. I'm often, I've told you, I'm thinking about my sermon and going over it and praying over it as I drive in on Sundays. I got that 35, 40 minute drive. And as I was driving in this morning, I thought, Wow, God, you really are declaring and proclaiming your true nature and your character this morning, it, even as I was driving slowly on the roads and watching the snow come down. God says this is his, his billboard. That's what creation is, to declare his presence. In other words, there is no excuse for not knowing that God exists. An example of someone who would ignore this, there's a couple categories of people, for example, that do it intentionally would be like an atheist. An atheist who says there is no God, there is no such thing as God, they're ignoring all the messages that creation is sending. An evolutionist would be another example of someone who would be ignoring the message that creation is sending that God intends. They would say, oh, it's all accidental, uh, nothing to see here, there's no purpose, there's no person behind this. And so if we don't acknowledge that God exists, if we don't ignore, acknowledge his general revelation that there is a God who has created, that he is above and beyond us, we're not going to take that next step into special revelation, are we? If you say there is no God, you're not going to seek after his son or want to know his son Jesus. If you say we're all a cosmic accident, you're not going to seek to know God better. As he lay there in bed, uh, Parama heard a voice, no body, but just a voice as he lay there in his bed that night that said, find Jesus and find the gospel. Well, that was interesting to Parama because he'd never heard either of those words in his life. And as he said later, he thought, I wonder what Jesus is and I wonder what the gospel is. Maybe it's a special rock or some kind of talisman that if I get that, it's going to bring some magic and some blessing into his life. And while he was thinking that, the voice continued on and said, uh, I want you to cross over the mountain. When you cross over the mountain and get to the other side, you're going to come to a small village. And as you begin to enter this village, there are going to be two men walking along the road. You are to stop these two men and ask them to give you directions to this street and then he gave him the name of the street, and he said, when you find that street, I want you to go to this house number. Parama was so excited to know what the voice wanted to do in his life, to know God and to seek him, that he decided not to wait till the next day. He got out of bed immediately and crossed over the mountain in the dark. He reached uh, the outskirts of the little village just as dawn 
was beginning, the sun was beginning to rise the next day. And as the voice had told him, here were two men who were walking into town. He stopped them and said, a voice told me, I'm supposed to ask you guys how to get to this street. And they said, we know where that street is. And they told him and sent him there. And he found the street. And then he found the door with the house number on it. And he knocked on the door. And after a few minutes, an old man opened the door. And Parama said, I am here to find Jesus and to find the gospel. One of the great truths of God's word is that he is always seeking us. I've told people sometimes when they, when they say, I don't, know if, I don't know if God is near me or I don't know if God loves me or cares about me or if he, may, maybe he's not seeking after me. And I, I, I always love to smile on that and say, do you know what? No matter how much you think you're seeking God, no matter how much you want to know him or be close to him, he wants to do that more. And in fact, the very fact that you're asking me this and have that desire is already evidence that God is pursuing you and God is seeking you. He's always the initiator. He's always the revealer. We read this in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, says this, For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. If you want to know God, you first have got to believe that he's there, that he exists, that he's real. And as you seek him, he will reward you in that. In Chronicles uh, chapter 7, it says, If you seek after God, you will find him when you seek after him with your whole heart. Because God is not uh, difficult to find. He is waiting for us to turn to him. And this is what general revelation is reminding us that that creation declares the glory of God, that it proclaims it insistently, passionately, in an emphatic manner. In other words, uh, the psalmist David is saying that like creation, this physical universe is like God's billboard for us. Okay? You guys know billboards as you go down the highway. I went to a basketball game yesterday and I, I drove by a billboard that was, uh, it didn't have an advertisement on it. So it was the billboard company advertising the billboard to you so that you'd advertise your product. And on the sign, it said, out-of-home advertising is always on every day. And you've probably seen that on some billboards, right? A lot of them have at the bottom, it'll be 24 slash 7 slash 365. What are they saying? You know what? This billboard's always on. You know, it doesn't shut down at night. If somebody drives by, they are going to see your company. They're going to see your product. And, and uh, some billboards are, are more attention-getting than others, aren't they? I, I, I always notice the one by West Salem. I don't know if you drive that way, but there's an electronic one there, so it's lit up, and it's bright, and it moves, and it has action, and it catches your attention. And isn't that interesting? That's what the psalmist is saying. You have a visual in God's creation and you see it moving and things happening and God declaring who he is. Creation is God's billboard. Or if I could make it a little uh, uh, better for the young people here, the psalmist is saying that creation is God's gift for you. Not gift, but a gif or a jif or whatever you want to pronounce that, right? It's something that grabs your uh, attention. And it's interesting that he says, day to day pours out speech and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor are there words whose voice is not heard. It goes to the end of the earth and the end of the world. If I could paraphrase that in mon modern language a little bit in the language of, of, of gifs and memes and videos and all that, here's what God's saying, right? He goes, I, I've, I've gone viral from day one. <laughs> He said, from day one, there's literally nobody on the planet, there's nobody on this earth who cannot see creation. Is there anywhere on the earth, is there anywhere in the universe you can go to not see what God has made, what he has done? He's going, I went viral before there was ever viral. This is why Romans 1 says, if you say that God doesn't exist, that he's not active, he says, you, you are without excuse. He said, I could not have made it any more plain. I could not have made it any more obvious who I am. Here's the controversial part or the part where people disagree. So 
what is the purpose of all this then? What is the purpose of general revelation? Well, most theologians or most pastors would say, well, the purpose uh, of general revelation is just for God to say, hey, I exist, I'm here, I, I created all this. And that they, they would say without a doubt that general revelation, if, if you acknowledge that, if you acknowledge that the heavens declare the glory of God and the skies above or creation proclaims that he is working, they would say, good for you, but that doesn't do anything for you. That's not going to save you from your sins. That's not going to uh, bring you into a relationship with God. So general revelation is just for its own end to declare that God exists. I don't know this for a fact. This is my impression from studying this. I would say probably 90% of pastors and theologians would take that view of general revelation. You won't be surprised to find that your pastor's in a 10% category who thinks differently than that. I believe that general revelation is God's way of paving the way for specific revelation. I believe that God is always seeking us. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4 says this, God desires that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world. What is, what is God's ultimate desire? God's ultimate desire is that every single person glorify him. This is the word glorify a little bit differently. It's that we worship him, that we exalt him, that we lift him up. And how do we do that? By being saved from our sins and by becoming his child. And so God's ultimate purpose in everything he does is to have a saving personal relationship with us so that we might worship him and recognize him for who he is. And so I believe, I'm in the 10% that believes that general revelation is a step that God uses for people that have never heard the gospel, have no aspect, uh, have no um, uh, access to the gospel. People like Pramana, who have never heard the name Jesus, who have never heard of a Bible, they've never heard the word gospel, they've never met a missionary, they've never been given a tract, uh, they don't even know, they, they know the Koran and they don't even know what that says, but they are a seeker of God. I believe that God uses general revelation if you are a seeker of God as he seeks you and you know that he exists and, and you acknowledge that and you seek to know him, then I believe that God will through special revelation and I believe he's doing this around the world today in ways that we are going to be amazed by when we get to heaven someday in these countries that don't have access. He's done this throughout history. Uh, for those of you that are Bible scholars, maybe we're in Bible 101, but some of you are in a Bible maybe 401 in your life. Doesn't this story of Pramana uh, remind you of a story in the scripture? Isn't it interesting God appearing to someone and say, go to this street. And you're going to meet a man and you're going to talk to this man. Think of Cornelius, right? You go to him and you talk to him and you say, here's what God has said. So Pramana knocked on the door. An old man came and uh, opened the door. And Pramana said, I'm here to find Jesus and I'm here to find the gospel. And you can imagine what happened next exactly as you would suspect. The old man grabbed him by the collar yanked him inside the house, slammed him up against the wall, and said, do you Muslims think I'm so foolish that you could trick me this easily? Like, this is how you're going to trap me? This is how you're going to get me? And Pramana said, sir, I don't know if you're foolish. Uh, I don't know what the trap is. He said, all I know is that last night a voice told me to come to this house, to this address, and to tell the man who answered the door, I'm here to find Jesus and to find the gospel. That's pretty special revelation. God's message in creation is that he loves us, that he exists, that he wants us to seek him, and come to know him through the knowledge of the truth. The old man pretty quickly realized, uh-oh, this is a God thing. This is a 
a big time God thing. And so he sat down with Pramana, Pramana and shared the gospel with him, who Jesus was, and he came to know Jesus Christ. Some of you, I'm guessing, a few of you probably know this story or recognize the story if you've read the, the book that I've re- recommended to you, The Insanity of God by Nick Ripkin. Um, this story happened actually not that many years ago um, in a country of, of uh, radical, uh, it's a radical Islamic country. In fact, we don't even know the country because we need to protect uh, Pramana even to this day as he follows and walks with the Lord. And so God has called us to, to seek him, to seek to know him. And he gets our attention first through general revelation and then draws us into a personal relationship with him. He did that with you, and he's doing that again today all around the world. We want to pray for that work to go forward. Amen? I'll wrap it up in a minute here. Father, thank you for this reminder today that you are always the seeker. You're always the initiator. You told us that in Romans 3.10. There's no one who seeks after you. There's no one who does good. God, when like Pramana wanted to know you and wanted to have relationship with you, he didn't even have the right God at the beginning, but he had the right heart. And he asked you to reveal yourself to him, and God, you did it in a powerful and dramatic way. You declared your presence. You proclaimed your nature in a very miraculous way and led him to the very place that he needed to be to hear about your son Jesus and to hear the gospel. Father, it may not be as dramatic as that. Maybe, but it may not. But there are people in this city, there are people in our lives, there are people in our workplaces who are seeking after you. They may not yet know your name, they may not yet know your work, They may not yet know the name of your son, but they want to know you. Father, will you bring those people into our lives and will we not be afraid to declare and proclaim the truth that we know, the gospel that we possess, the relationship that we have with them? For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. If you're not rejoicing this morning, in the testimony of Pramana, boy, you're kind of jaded. <laughs> you need to spend a little more time looking at God proclaims himself through his creation and how God seeks after us. If that wasn't enough to impress you, let me, some of you are math people, let me make it a little more interesting for you. At the time that God spoke to Pramana and led him to the old man, He's from a radical Muslim nation of 20, over 24 million people. And at that time, a few years ago, when he became a Christian, there were only three known Christians in a population of 24 million. And God led him to one of the three who could declare and proclaim the gospel to him. What do you think our marching orders are? If God says that creation is declaring his glory and that creation is proclaiming the works that he is doing don't you think that he is really expecting us who know him in a personal way to declare and proclaim the gospel to those we know when you are open to god's leading i promise you he will bring people into your life who want to know god and you can fill in who you possess and what you have and how God is working in your life so that they can see his great and marvelous deed. Go and declare and proclaim who you know and what you have this week and what you've seen God doing in your life. Amen? Amen.